welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelly and I do cute claws. <laughs> I am not a nail tech. I am not a nail anything. I am just a do-it-yourselfer who figured out a long time ago that I could save a lot of money by learning to do my own nails. So this video is going to take you through my process all the way from start to finish. Um, here I am just getting things set up to soak off my old set and get ready for my new set. Uh, that's why this video is so long is because we are going through everything. I do speed it up when I can just to try to cut down some of the time. Um, feel free to kind of zip through to the different sections. Um, what I'm showing you all here is that I like to use a heating pad um, to keep my um, awfully fast nail remover warm because that really is a secret to heat it up. It works faster. Um, so I know some people do like the double boiler method where they have the hot water, but I just find the heating pad is easier and I don't have to worry about the water getting cold. So um, first step here is, you know, to take off the shiny coat, the top coat of the nail. And I have to do this because I use a gel top coat and you want to make sure that your drill bit is spinning the opposite way from the way that you're going to work it. So in my case, I'm kind of going, I'm doing this swooping method down around the cuticle. And so I want the nail drill to be spinning opposite the way that I'm working. So, um, yeah, again, I just, I, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos. I've watched my share of them as I've learned to try to do my own nails. I started out by doing uh, the regular acrylic. I bought a Tammy Taylor kit for that and then um, mastered that pretty well. Um, it is definitely more difficult uh, than dip powder um, because you really have to pick up the the liquid, the monomer with your brush and then pick up the, the powder and shape it onto your nail. And um, I, then I found there was dip powder and I just liked that process a whole lot better. I thought that the, the coats I was able to do, they just come out more even, more thin, more natural. And so I have since switched over to uh, dip powder. I started out myself by, you know, um, getting a kit from Rossi. Rossi was the first company I kind of stumbled across and I liked their prices and so I, I got a, a starter kit from Rossi. And then I think before my kit came, I, I ordered a bunch more stuff because I just knew I was gonna love it. And then when I got it, I, I really did love it. It was really easy to work with. Um, the only thing is that I found that I do suffer from dip flu, which is a real thing. I did not know it was happening to me at first, um, but I figured it out pretty quick that it was me having a reaction to the dip powder base and top coat since they are essentially the same thing. And um, I kind of had to, you know, figure out worked, what worked best for me in terms of sitting in a ventilated area, wearing a mask. You saw me, me put my mask on earlier. And um, I even now, I hold my breath when I actually have the dip liquid out, um, the base liquid, because I just, I, I find that, you know, I need to try to keep it from coming into my airways. Um, I, I get just a really terrible cough if I'm not careful and I actually have like a gas mask on order from Amazon um, and that should be arriving here soon and hopefully that will provide me further protection so anyway um, so here you're seeing me just kind of take off that that gel top coat layer I use gel top coat instead of the dip liquid top coat a, because I'm allergic to it, obviously, but B, I just, I've had some issues with the brush going hard on me, um, and I just like the shine of the gel top coat. Personally, I think it works a lot better for me. I already had the lamp since I was, um, you know, a do-it-yourselfer for quite some time, 
and so um, by all means you don't need to use the gel top coat if you don't want to I just find that it works best for me um, so again you know when you're trying to take off your um, soak off your your nail powder here you're gonna just need to break the seal and that's why you have to remove that shiny top layer of the top coat so that when you go to soak your hand um, it will penetrate through and actually remove the dip powder and here on my left hand my pointer actually has a little bit of a tip on it because I had broke my pointer finger you know a few weeks ago before I had done this pink and white mani and um, I had already, I had had foils on my white finger, my ring finger as an accent, and I had filed those off just the night before um, redoing my, my set here. So that's why you see that kind of blank white nail there. Um, so, yep, I'm just um, gonna finish, you know, taking off the top coat here and getting my nail prepped for soaking. So I will just let you continue to watch. I just wanted to pop back in to um, let you know that obviously when you're switching hands with your drill, um, again, you want the drill bit to go opposite the way that you're working. Um, so I was just kind of pointing that out. I am pretty useless when it comes to working on my dominant hand with my non-dominant hand. So just in an effort to spare you um, having to watch that, I did file my um, my right dominant hand off camera and so now I'm just kind of getting the powder off um, you'll see me kind of dust my hands a lot because um, powder gets all over everything and just the grittiness of the powder kind of um, is a little bit annoying but you know whatever <laughs> uh, it's something I'm willing to deal with so here I'm I was gonna go ahead and try to use this little dish to put my uh, awfully fast liquid in but um, I couldn't really get the, the heating pad to kind of go around it in a right way that would make it hot. So I switched my process back to using the baggie, which is what I typically do. Um, I just think that there are some issues with using a baggie. I don't know if it's the awfully fast. I don't know if it does it, if this would do the same thing with just 100% acetone, but I noticed that it seems to melt the bag a little bit um, and then I have like this weird sticky crap like all over my hand when I pull my hand out and um, and then in some cases like I don't know I feel like this goes pretty quick for me like 10 minutes per hand but like I feel like if it degrades the bag enough like then it, it'll start to like leak out of the bag so again I don't know if this is just a problem I'm having or if other people have this so um, I do like the baggy method. I like using the heating pad, but I think I'm going to have to try to switch up how I'm doing this stuff because um, that is kind of annoying to me is having that sticky stuff all over my, my hand when I'm done. So you saw me put a little bit of a um, scrubby, um, like a scotch bright piece into the bag. And so what I do is I wait for the liquid to get warm um, and then I start rubbing my nails on that piece of scotch bright in there. And so if obviously I've really, you know, sped this video up, but um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm rubbing my nails on there, um, not too harshly because I find if you go too aggressively, then you can end up, you know, damaging your natural nail. And um, I don't like to use tips if I can avoid it. So I try to go easy. I did have a couple of small corners break on my pointer finger and my pinky finger when I was doing this. So um, even I got a little bit too aggressive with it. <laughs> and then, um, I mean, you can see how quickly it, it works. It, I would say it probably took me around 10 minutes each hand to get the dip powder to come off. Um, and then I went off camera, of course, and was washing my hands in the bathroom um, to try to get all of that sticky stuff that's, that seems to get all over my hands. And, and again, I think it's the bag melting. I don't know for sure if it's the bag melting. It could just be the powder that comes off is then sticking to my hand because it got wet with the awfully fast. Um, so a little bit of a nuisance there. But 
Uh, I did, now I'm just kind of buffing my nails with a buffing block that I got from Rossi um, to get any remnants of powder off of my nails so I can start with a clean nail bed. So that is what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going very gentle with the buffing block as so as not to take too much of my natural nail off. You really need to be careful. I do not use the drill on my natural nail um, because I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to make my nails too, too thin and too weak, my natural nail that is. So here I'm just moving on after I got all of the powder soaked off. I am going and I'm pushing back my cuticles. You just want to make sure that you're really getting as much of the nail plate exposed as possible. And I think that this is probably where I spend the bulk of my time is on my nail prep when I'm doing my nails because prep is so important so that you don't have any lifting or any issues after you've taken the time to, you know, do the application of the dip powder. So you need to push back the cuticle. Um, you need to get all of that dead cuticle off your nail plate. Um, you will see here in a minute that I, I then take a special attachment on my drill bit to um, go around the cuticle area and just take all that dead skin off. Um, but I really do like, you know, just using the cuticle pusher too. Um, so yeah, and then I, I, this is where I'm taking the, the diamond round cuticle bit and my nail drill is very, very low speed. Um, you don't want to go too fast with this because obviously you can hurt your natural nail. Um, the goal here is just to remove the dead skin and any excess cuticle. Now, in my case, I have always had crazy cuticles. They always grow out super crazy. Um, I really have to spend a lot of time pushing back my cuticles as I have growth on my nails after I've done a set. I typically wear my sets anywhere from two to three weeks but um, my cuticles just run rampant. They just want to grow into and over my natural nail. It's always been a problem for me. I don't know why, even when I was going with to salons way back in the day, they would always tell me, you have a lot of cuticle. <laughs> they would always pick on me for that. Um, and I just, I don't know what to say about it. Um, so I do, I have to just be very mindful of the fact that my cuticles are crazy and like to grow and um, they don't look nice and neat and clean. I do my daughter's nails and her nails always look beautiful because she doesn't have that crazy cuticle growth. Um, I'm so glad she did not get that from me, but yeah, it's definitely a pain. So um, yeah, just kind of taking my time here, um, you know, taking off that dead cuticle and this does help, using this bit helps to kind of push back the cuticle even further and then it helps to um so you don't have to use the nippers the cuticle nippers as much um so this video here when i was going around my cuticle it cut out i don't know what happened when i was doing it but i had like you know taken off all the cuticle i went back with my buffing block and went around my nails again i had already kind of nipped my cuticles like anything that was like waving standing up and waving at me i kind of clipped off but here you're seeing me kind of go back again just to make sure that I'm getting all of that and then um, I am pretty much done with you know removing the cuticle and um, I just kind of dust off with my fluffy brush there to ensure the nail dust is off and um, really wanting to start with a clean nail plate so I will just let you watch me here while I finish clipping and I'll be right back. So here you're seeing me um, come in with my nail file. Now I, I had already done this, but again, the video got cut off. Not sure what happened. So I'm not really spending too much time on it on this section, but I just wanted to show you kind of how I shape my nails. I like the coffin or ballerina shape. Um, I don't know that I hold any of my tools the right way when I'm doing my nails. I just do what works for me. So sometimes I have to turn my hand in funky ways. Um, my nails aren't perfect, the shape isn't perfect, but they work for me and I like the way that they look. So that's really, you know, all that's important is that when you're doing your own nails that 
you are happy with how they come out. So again, I'm not sure that, I mean, I didn't go to beauty school or anything for this. I'm just doing what works for me. Um, the file that I like to use there is the file that I got from my Tammy Taylor kit when I first started doing acrylic nails. I'm not sure what the grit on it is because all that information has worn off since I've used this file for so long. It would definitely be a file that I get going forward, but I will make sure that I link all of the um, tools and um, supplies that I'm using in the description box so that you guys can see everything. So after I get my general shape that I like, um, I do, I went in here with just some acetone. You could use alcohol too, just to kind of get rid of all that powder that's left over from filing. Um, and I know some people don't file during this stage because they figure they're going to have to file later, but I just, I like to try to define my shape as much as I can before I start adding the powder to my nails. And um, here I'm just going in with my little buffing block again because as I was filing down my nails and getting the the length just right, um, I had some like little pieces that are kind of like built up underneath the the free edge of the nail. So I was just using the buffing block to take that off. So um, when you add dip powder, it does kind of add some bulk to your nail and. Um, I guess that's why I like to kind of make sure my shape is spot on before I start adding the uh, the dip powder. So now my nails are all prepped and ready and we're gonna get into the dip powder application. So here I am going for a French tip um, look today. I am therefore using this little French dip tray that I got from Rossi as part of their French kit. Um, it has a deep end and a shallow end. The shallow end, my understanding is you want to use that if you want like more of a curve, a smile line on your nail. And you want to use the deeper end if you want more of a straight line and not so much of a curve um, for, that, for that white tip. So I like to use the shallow side because I do like the smile line to be um, very curvy to my natural nail. And then you're seeing, um, you know, the supplies that I'm using. I'm using the Rossi primer and activator, but I'm using triple vitamin base. And that's because the triple vitamin base is, um, I think it's a better base. I definitely did not have as much of a bad reaction to it when I decided to give that a try instead um, because the Rossi liquid, that one was just way too strong and I think that that's what made me have such a bad reaction. So the triple vitamin is definitely better. I still have to hold my breath, however, um, to try to, you know, minimize it coming into my lungs. Otherwise I'll have that super, super bad cough for the next two, three days. Um, as far as my colors go, I'm using a Snow White and Cotton from Rossi and then my clear is a Revel clear. Um, I think it's called Vivian. And I, I have a Rossi clear as well, but I use that for when I'm doing glitter powders because um, I don't like the cross contamination. So the, the Revel is what I use for my non glare powder colors. So here I'm um, just kind of, you know, putting the primer on my nail. And because I have a little bit of length to my nail, I want to, um, you know, build up my nail, make it stronger by dipping into the clear powder first. And um, I, I typically work one hand at a time here, um, but I have to prep and put this, this um, primer on all my nails because if I don't do it all right now, then chances are when I switch to do my dominant hand, I will forget this step. So I just put that on all my nails right now. And then when I'm going in with my clear, the Rossi um, jars I noticed aren't super full to the top, but the Revel jars seem to be. So I had to pour out some of the Revel clear powder into the cap just so that when I dip my finger in, it does not go all over the place. I don't like to waste product. So uh, you just saw me move that out of the way. But um, here I'm gonna go in with the base and I'm just gonna apply it to three quarters of my nail. Again, just because I'm kind of building it up to make it stronger. Um, so because I put this little bit down first, um, it, it also helps with the apex, with the shape of the nail. And I do a total of four dips, including this dip right here. So um, I always dip in twice and then pat off or tap off the excess 
and then I move on to my next nail. Um, you want to make sure that you keep your, your dip face brush kind of flat, um, you know, with your nail to ensure that the coat's going on nice and smooth and even. If it's too bulky or you've got too much product on there, you're going to flood your cuticle or, you know, when you tip, dip into the powder, it's just going to be really thick and kind of gross and sticky and so you want to avoid that. Um, but you'll just, you know, put, put the clear on if you do have some length to your nail because clear powder is stronger than colored powder, I guess because of the pigment in it, it makes it um, not as strong. So that's why I always go with clear or like a, a nude color as my, my base color. So um, just finishing up with my thumb here, again, going in twice, tapping off excess. And then I let all of that kind of dry just for a little bit and then I go back in with my fluffy brush and dust off all of the excess powder um, before I then and am ready to dip again for my next dip so now I'm gonna start doing the French dip and I just am closing my base because I don't want to have an accident and spill that all over the place while I'm prepping my my French tray here um, also, you'll see me bring out this little soap dish. So when I first got my first dip jars, I guess, like I took off that little like seal protect like piece of paper thing that's in there. And I probably should have left that because now I notice that every time I, you know, mix my jars up before I use them and then I open them, it makes a huge mess. And so I use the soap dish kind of to help collect all of that stuff that <laughs> comes all the powder that comes out when I open it so that I'm not wasting it and you'll see me here just kind of dump that back into my my jar um, but yeah so lesson learned here is like after you open your dip powder jars like keep that little like seal protect layer on there because I find that it helps keep this from happening um, so I, I only have a, like my first I don't know handful of jars I had thrown away the seal and uh, so those are the ones that I typically will use my soap dish for. Um, I do have cats, so you see me plucking out cat hairs here. Um, if you have cats, you know that cat hair is all over everything all the time. So if, um, if I do notice a cat hair here or there, I make sure that I pull it out. And then once I've got the powder in the dip tray there, I just want to kind of even it out, make sure that it's nice and even. And then I'm going to go in with the cotton color, the Rossi cotton color, and I'm going to open that one. That one didn't make a mess on me like the white one did, even though the seal is missing. I'm not quite sure. I guess I got lucky on this one. Um, you did see me mix my jars really well. I'm mixing this one again just with the cuticle stick because I noticed that with pigment and colors, if you don't mix them up right away, before you use them, then sometimes when you go to dip in, the um, the opacity, I guess, of the color is darker in some areas than it is in others, and it just, it looks weird. It looks like you're trying to do a, mar a marble effect without really doing marble. It's just annoying. So just make sure that you mix everything up really good before you use it. Here, I am i don't have product on my nail, like the base yet. I'm just kind of testing out how I'm gonna dip my finger in the tray to get that smile line. Um, so it was just kind of me practicing. Uh, this is only the second time I'm attempting French. I love French because I just love how classic and clean and just, ugh, it just looks so awesome to me. It's my favorite look. And um, I wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm doing it right. So my first attempt did not go so well. Um, this attempt definitely went way better like I still have it on and I just every time I look at it I just am, ugh, am so in love with how it looks it just is is beautiful to me the French style so here you'll see me kind of pushing my finger in ever so slightly after putting my base on and then I you want to make sure you angle your finger down and tap off excess so that that powder doesn't come back over the smile line on the side that you don't want it, the cuticle side. And then I go in a second time just to make sure that I have that smile line where I want it. And I leave it for a sec to, um, 
you know, for that powder to absorb into the base. And then you are seeing me here dump the cotton color over. Um, you don't want to dip in because when you're doing the French style because you don't want to mess up your smile line and it could push it up and mess it up. So that's why you have to pour over the, the natural pink color that you're using. And then I'm going around my cuticle with the orange wood stick, which I got a pack from Walmart. And I do find that this really helps just keep the cuticle line very clean. Um, and I, I take my base all the way up just a hairline away from my cuticle. I mean, I, I try really hard not to touch my cuticle with it, but sometimes, you know, I just, you know, I'm not a professional. I don't have super steady hands. You can probably tell that a lot of the times my, my hands have a little shake to them and that just happens for me when I'm trying to do something, you know, um, delicate, I guess. So the cuticle stick just helps make sure that this, the cuticle is clean and that really comes in handy later when you're filing um, around the cuticle. So um, here you're just going to continue to watch me um, do my first layer, my first layer of power powder on this application and I'm just going to let you uh, veg out and watch this part um, for right now and I'll pop back in in a little bit. Sorry that you see my head kind of pop in frame um, sometimes. I do wear glasses. I have worn glasses for a long time. My eyes are quite terrible without glasses. I can't do anything without them. And so the way I've positioned my camera, I, I just, you see my head come in here sometimes because I'm really trying to get a good look at what I'm doing. Um, I try to not you know get right up on my nail because again with my dip flu I don't want to be inhaling this this crap and getting that bad cough so um, a trick another trick I've learned is to try to keep my hands um, away from my face as much as possible but again I apologize for my head coming in sometimes because I'm just trying to see what the heck it is I'm doing since this is um, you know so difficult I mean you just want to be really careful on not getting the the base on your cuticle and get the smile line just right so there's just kind of a lot going on and sometimes I just find I have to lean in a little bit to to really see so I just want to apologize about that in advance and um, just continuing with my application here um, I will come back in in just a little bit wanted to come back in and kind of reiterate the importance of you know going around your cuticle with this cuticle stick um, you do want to make sure that you don't have any product um, you know over your cuticle or stuck to your cuticle if you can avoid it because that is really going to cause lifting later on um, and so when when you'll see later when I go around the cuticle with my e-file um, there's kind of like a little a little well or a little ridge, you know um, That's kind of where I kind of stick the edge of my drill bit into to kind of clean that up and file it and um, That that really I'm able to do that because I run around the cuticle with this cuticle stick 
and then it just um, it creates more of a seal on the nail plate where the product is and then I don't ever have any problems with lifting so I just wanted to kind of reiterate that um, you're seeing me here you know move on with the application on my thumb and then um, you know I'll, I'll kind of dust off all my fingers and go in with a, a second application of the colors and that's that's my mo that's what I do I, I do a, a, a base like clear coat of product just for the apex and the strength and then I do two coats of the color whatever colors I'm using and then I do I cap everything that I do in clear as well so that's the fourth coat so you're gonna be seeing me get into that um, I am going to speed up after this this round of application of, of, of product um, so that we're going a little bit faster through the rest of it because it's just repetitive at that point um, and then you want to make sure that you brush off between dips because any excess powder that's not adhered, um, it'll kind of gunk up your brush when you go to apply another layer of base. So it's really important to dust all that off. You don't want to dust too quickly though because if it's not dry, um, all of that will stick to your fluffy brush. So definitely I've had that happen. So uh, now just gonna kind of get into going on the second round of the colors here. Um, I just kind of mixed up my, my, my pink color there again um, to make sure that it's applying uh, with the right opacity throughout. Um, and then when I go back in for the smile line again, I'm, I'm lining it up to what I did before, um, which is really important on your second dip. And then I just kind of wanted to take this opportunity to let you guys know a little bit more about me. So um, this is a hobby of mine. Um, I do my nails, I do my daughter's nails. My daughter is 12 and I started doing her nails because she's a nail biter and it just, it grosses me out when she chews her nails down to a stub. And I just found that when I put acrylic, whether it was original like application type acrylic with the monomer and the polymer or this, like it creates that love, that, that strength, that layer of strength and hardness to it that, you know, obviously you can't bite easily anyway I guess if you were to really go at it you could still like chew your nail but it would probably hurt you a lot worse and probably hurt your teeth a lot worse too but me putting the the powder and the acrylic on her she's you know that's how she stopped biting her nails so um, I, I do it as a hobby it's really therapeutic um, for me um, to do it and I, I have, I'm a busy mom, obviously, and I have a full-time job that I work um, in human resources. And so that keeps me busy. Um, so I don't know how often I'll be able to upload videos. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I feel like right now I'll be lucky if I can do one video a week. Um, but I mean, I, there are some people that I follow on YouTube too, and I love their videos. I can't get enough of them. It just makes me so happy when I see that they've got an upload, you know, every couple of days. And I really wish I could get there, but again, I just, I don't do this full time. This is kind of like something I do on the side and I just don't know how often I'm gonna be able to get videos up. So right now I'm gonna start with a goal of once a week and then we'll just kind of see how it progresses from there. And then also I just, I'm, since I'm not a full-time YouTuber doing nails all the time, like I don't apply any of the peel off base to my nails and I don't change my nails out um, very frequently. Um, I try to wear my set of nails for two or three weeks, depending on my growth and um, go and change them go from there. You know, I do the same with my daughter. So I definitely, I'm not soaking off. I'm not trying to be soaking off any more often than that just because soaking off is definitely a pain i have seen the peel off face coat that you would put down on your natural nail after um, you've prepped your nail so that you can you know peel off your manicure after you know three or five days whatever and i just i don't think i have really the time for that at least not right now that might change later um but you know we'll just I'll play it by ear, see if that's something that interests me later. But right now, just kind of doing my nails for me and and thought that, you know, if this 
video could help other people, then I would definitely want to share it. So i um, kind of taking a stab at this whole YouTube thing and making these videos and, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a learning curve for sure. Making a video, it's not something that is a short process by any means. And that's probably the other reason why I just can't do as many videos as I would like to, because it just takes a long time to not just film them, but also edit them and then do the voiceover and all of that. So, um, I definitely like it though. It's a lot of fun for me. So I hope you guys are learning something here. Um, right now you see me doing my clear coat cap of the powder and this is just, I recommend doing this because again, it'll add that extra layer of strength to your nails and because the clear powder is stronger and then also you want to protect your color when you're filing. So if you don't do the clear coat when you file, obviously you're going to file off some of your color and when you're doing things like, you know, French with the smile line, I don't want to take a risk that I'm going to mess that up. So I'm doing the clear coat cap. Also, if you're, I highly recommend using the clear coat cap when you're doing it over any glitters, because again, if you don't, you're going to be filing off, you know, your glitter and it might not be a lot, um, especially if you don't find that you have to do a whole lot of filing, but I just like to err on the side of caution and just do everything with this clear coat um, of dip over everything that I do. So I'm getting finished up here and then i um, just going to let you guys continue to watch. I, I'm not going to show my dominant hand. I, I do do the dominant hand. I do do. <laughs> I do it off camera um, so that, you know, all my nails do look the same but I just didn't wanna take the time to show me working on my uh, dominant hand with my non-dominant hand. Uh, this is a long video already, so I'm just doing everything I can to try to keep it short. Um, but, you know, I hope that if you are still with me and you're still watching, that you found this particularly helpful if you are new to dip powder. Um, that's why I wanted to make my first video a long video, is just kind of to show every single step going through the process, including the removal. Um, I definitely see myself doing shorter videos in the future, um, maybe not showing the soak off or the nail prep, but just coming in with the actual application of the dip powder up until, you know, the set is complete. So those should definitely make for shorter videos. Um, now you see me coming in with my Rossi activator and I love putting the activator on because you can see it like soaking into the powder, which is awesome. It just is like a... I don't know, it just gives me a little feeling like, oh, like, okay, yes, I'm activating. And I, I just love it. That may seem silly, but you might find yourself liking this part as well. So I do go over with the activator on each one of my nails twice, just to make sure that I'm really getting it in. And what this does is it, it's gonna penetrate all the layers of dip and it's going to activate the, the base coat and the powder and make it hard like acrylic. So you just wanna give that a few minutes to dry. And then when you tap on it with your file or your nail, it's gonna make like a clicking noise. That's how you know it's ready to go. Um, and your nails will look matte. Um, they should not look wet when, when you start filing. And so then you just kind of see me going in with my file um, to file my sidewalls and kind of get my shape back to what it was since again, adding the layers of dip does add some bulk to the nails and kind of changes the shape ever so slightly. So I'm just trying to crisp up my look again um, with my coffin shape. And um, I keep my corners pretty sharp. I know some people go in and they kind of round their corners of their nails so that they're not so sharp. I kind of like that sharpness. Um, that's what I like about having a new set of nails. Um, I, and then, you know, as you're wearing your nails, they kind of dull on the corners anyway. So I just don't feel like I need to, you know, round them off. But if you want to do that, by all means, go ahead. And then um, after I do my sidewall and my um, free edge, then you'll see me come in with my nail drill. And I utilize the, the nail drill process the same as I do when I was drilling to take off the um, top coat before I was, you know, getting ready to soak off my old set. Um, I keep the drill, it's not at a super low uh, speed, but it is pretty low. I definitely don't go as fast as the drill can go because, you know, the faster it goes, um, 
obviously you can hurt yourself if you aren't careful if you feel your nail is getting hot when you're drilling then you know that's kind of a bad sign you don't want to be hurting yourself so you, you do want to go as slow a speed as possible but not so slow that it's you're having a hard time removing um, excess product and, and really getting the shape that you want so you kind of have to find that balance that works for you um, my drill it has a forward and reverse on it so that I can change the way that the drill bit is spinning again I like it to go opposite from the way that I'm working my drill I just find that that works better for me um, and then it it has a dial to change the speed on it but it doesn't have numbers so I really there's not like a set speed I do each time I do my nails I just find the speed that works for me so um, it, it might be slightly different every single time but that's okay because um, it gets the job done and that's what's important um, you could definitely forego the drill you don't have to have a nail drill or an e-file if you if you just use you know your file then your hand file then that's totally fine I know a lot of women that do that um, for me it just takes longer and I'm doing my nails already takes me quite a bit of time if I'm honest so in any step of it that I can make go a little bit faster I definitely want to so <laughs> that's why I decided a long time ago to get the drill um, the drill was more important when I was doing original like basic acrylic because again I would just you have to be more careful with how you uh, lay it and shape it on your nail and with dip powder um, I feel like I don't have to drill as much or file as much and here the file or the drill bit rather that I really like to use is the one that came with my drill bit or my, I'm sorry with my drill the bits that came with my drill and it's just one of these diamond cylinder bits um, this is the little thicker one there's one that's a little bit thinner as you saw in my little red case there um, but I, the reason I like this drill bit is because it does not have a super sharp corner to it or edge to it and so I find that I can get up right up to my cuticle in that little like well that I created when I went around with my cuticle stick and this does not ever cut me. Um, I've used other uh, drill bits that are like for fine, uh, fine drill bits and if they don't have the safety um, like edge on it, the rounded tip then I, I have cut myself with, with the um, drill bit. So um, the, you need to be careful with that. And then I have used the ones that have the safety rounded you know, edge to them, but then I find that I can't get up to, as close as I like to my cuticle. So um, there's definitely a lot of options out there. There's a lot of different bits. There's a lot of different tools that you can use to get the job done. You just kind of have to find what works for you. Um, this works perfect for me. Um, I, I don't know that you can get this type of a bit um, on its own. I might have to do some research for that if I was to replace it. Um, but I do know that that little red pack of like five or six bits or whatever, they come standard with every drill that you do buy. Um, and so that, that's, you know, that's the one that you would already have when you buy a nail, a nail drill. So you should be set. Um, and then uh, the only other bits that I use is you saw me use earlier the little cuticle ball. Um, I ordered that one separate from Amazon. And then at the very beginning of the video when I was taking off the shiny top coat um, prepping to soak my nails off, I had gotten a set from, um, I can't remember what the name of the set is off the top of my head now, but I'll, I'll make sure I put it in the description box. But it was like a set of bits that I got and it had um, one that was particularly coarse. It had a little C on it and that one I use when I'm trying to take off um, the gel top coat or I mean if I was to you know dip my nails in clear powder and then use gel color on top that would be the bit that I would use to take all that off because since it is more coarse it works to take all that stuff off a little bit faster. This here, this bit is very fine. I'm not really using it to take a lot of the product off. I'm just trying to utilize it to, you know, really get my nail shape down the way that I like. And um, 
really get out any excess product that is right next to my cuticle. Um, and then I spend some time kind of shaping down my side walls just a little bit so that I get that perfect shape to my nail. And I'm constantly like turning my hand and looking at my nail from different angles to make sure that it looks correct. Um, and then once I'm happy with the with the shape of it and you know I feel like I've cleaned up the cuticle really well then I move on to my next nail so um, I did also notice when I was dipping into the um, little tray for the French um, look that I went for this time I did notice that it kind of created a little bit of a bump right where this the white ends and the pink begins or the pink ends and the white begins however you want to look at it and I didn't worry about that too much because when I capped in clear, it kind of evened that out a little bit for me. That's the other reason I like to cap in clear. But then um, coming in here with my nail drill, I can really just kind of smooth it out and, and make that bump go away. And I'm sure that that's just um, user error on my part because, you know, I'm not super experienced when it comes to the French style. Um, I'm sure it'll get better once I, you know, work on it and just practice at it. But um, again, any issue that I thought I might have had when I was dipping and putting the powder on my nails, I'm, I'm able to kind of fix it here with the, with the drill. So I guess that's another lesson I've learned is that as terrible as my nails might look after I've applied the product, I know that I can always make it look a hundred times better after I've spent some time with my drill, just kind of cleaning things up and making it look nice. So um, that's the other reason I like having the nail drill. Again, it makes this process go by a little faster. So you're just going to kind of watch me do some work on my, on my nails here with the drill. Um, I do end up speeding it up here, um, I think, on the next nail just so that, um, you know, we're trying to save some time on the video. So I will let you watch and I will be back in a little bit. Come back in and let you guys know that um, obviously there are some steps in my process that are a little bit different because again I use the gel top coat instead of the dip liquids top coat so if you were to use the dip liquids um, after you file you want to make sure that you buff to really get that nice perfectly smooth surface um, and then you would want to do another layer of activator. And then after you let the activator dry, you wanna go in with a lint-free wipe and kind of wipe off any excess powder um, before then you are ready for your dip liquid top coat. Um, so you, you kind of need to be careful if you're, if you're utilizing that top coat because you're supposed to come in with like really quick strokes on the first round of top coat the first layer of top coat you're supposed to get each nail done quickly with like two to three strokes and you want to wipe off your brush each time onto a paper towel before you stick it back in your bottle this is supposed to help uh, reduce contamination and uh, reduce the likelihood of your brush going hard um, and then when you come in with the second and final layer of the top coat with the dip liquid system, then that is where you can take a little bit more time to really get it on your nail perfectly. You can do it in more than just the three, the three stro uh, strokes, and that's what really is going to give you the shine. Um, so again, because I don't use that, I after I'm done, you know, filing my nails, and, and right here I'm just going in with a hand file to just make sure that I get my shape 100% perfect the way I like it. Um, but 
I, I won't be doing the buffing and I won't be doing the second layer of activator. And the reason for that is because gel polish, gel top coat, the kind that you care with the lamp, it needs kind of a rougher surface to adhere to. Um, so the first time I did my nails, I made the mistake of buffing and putting the second layer of activator on. And then when I put my gel top coat on, it literally peeled off all in one like peel like the very next day. So um, that is why you wanna skip those steps if you're doing a gel top coat like I do. So here I'm just kind of being picky with my nails and getting out all of the dust and like the crud that kind of has built up underneath my nail from filing. And then I'm gonna go in with some alcohol and on a lint-free wipe and just kind of dust off all of my nails to get all of that powder off before I then put my top coat on. So um, just kind of doing that really quickly. At this point, you could go and wash your hands if you wanted to. Um, again, I, I don't think there's any harm in washing your hands. If you're using gel top coat, you probably need to be a little bit more careful with washing your hands if you're using the dip liquids because the activator on the nail needs to be there so that the top coat of the gel liquids kind of, you know, hardens um, the way that it's supposed to. Um, so you would probably need to do a little bit more research with that. So here I just got out my um, UV slash LED curing light um, that I got from Amazon. I think it works really well. And you're seeing me go in with right now what is my favorite gel top coat model one's top coat i just think that it the shine that it gives is perfect um it, it i've never had any problems with with the liquid going clumpy on me or anything like that so right now it like i said it's just my favorite i got it on amazon i got a set of three it comes with a gel base it comes with this top coat, the glossy top coat, and then it also comes with a matte finish top coat, which I've also used and love it. So um, I'm just kind of going around, um, you know, very carefully so as not to flood my cuticles with the top coat and um, just making sure I've got some nice even strokes um, covering the entire nail. And then you see me kind of cap the free edge there with the gel polish. And then after I've done this with each one of my nails, um, I kind of use my thumb to go around or my fingers on my other hand to go around each nail to make sure that if I've got any excess that's kind of gotten on my skin, I'm getting it off before I cure it. And then you'll also see me here in a little bit, I turn my hand upside down before I cure it. And that's just because I saw that on several YouTube channels and, and doing research of my own that when you turn your hand upside down, it kind of levels out the gel top coat and it kind of gives a little bit more of that apex rounded look to your nails. And so I turn my hand upside down just to like let it level out before I then go into my lamp and then I leave it in my lamp for, my lamp has two settings. It has a 30 second setting and a 60 second setting. So I go ahead and I cure my nails for 60 seconds, which I did speed through here. So I'll let you finish watching and I'll come back in a little bit. So here I am just going through with the um, cuticle pusher that I have and it is it, anything that has built up underneath my nails I am just scraping underneath there to get that off just again because I'm picky and I hate all of that buildup 
um, that can occur. This was the part that they never seemed to do when I would go to the salon, and I guess that's maybe why I'm so picky with it now that I do my own nails. Um, I just felt like they were so quick to like turn my chair and want me out of there <laughs> that you know they they just didn't clean up underneath my nails the way that I always wished they would, and um, so that's all that I'm doing here. And so now I am pretty much done. Um, I'm just coming in with my candy skincare cuticle oil, my candy, um, candy skincare. I just, I love it. Um, I see that a lot of nail, um, ladies that I watch on YouTube like this product. And so I went ahead and got some, I, I used to use just some cuticle oil that I got from, um, you know, the, the different uh, stores, the nail supply stores that you can go to, Sally's and things, and I just love this one. I love the way it smells. She's got all kinds of different like scents. Uh, the it just it's awesome. And so I kind of am pretty generous when I put my cuticle oil on and rub it in. And then this is the um, the lotion. It's an unscented lotion that I just feel like my hands just really need after I'm done working on my nails. Um, I just, I find when I put this on with some of the oil, it just, it kind of brings my hands and my skin back to life. Um, so this is definitely my go-to um, for finishing off my nails. Um, just a quick note that I have at this point in the video, I had not finished my, my dominant hand in an effort to save time. And so um, I do go back in with a little lint-free wipe with alcohol to take off any of the lotion and oil that's on my right hand so that I can top coat it. And then I put um, some more of the candy skincare stuff on there. So this is the finished look. I, look, I'm really happy with it. I think it came out awesome. Um, I really like the shine. I think I did a good job on my shape of my nails. I think I did a good job trying to make sure that the um, the white part was the same. So I really enjoyed making this video for you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that you found it useful and, um, educational if you're just starting out. Um, sorry about the length. I know it's long, but you know, feel free to zip through parts that maybe you don't need to focus on. And I hope to see you on my channel next time. Um, you know, this is all the snapshot of everything I used in the video, but I will link everything down in the description box. And um, yes, just thank you so much for your support and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.